Okay. The president has uh, also received the following letter from Senator McKim that, um, dear president, pursuant to standing order 75, I give notice that today the Australian Greens propose to move that in the opinion of the Senate, the following is a matter of urgency. The need for the Senate to support the banning of fossil fuel sponsorship in sport, recognising the leadership shown recently by prominent athletes speaking out against fossil fuel companies sponsoring sport organisations. Uh, your sincerely, uh, Nick McKim. Is that proposal supported? Okay. I understand that informal arrangements thank you, have been uh, made to allocate specific times to each of the speakers in today's debate. With the concurrence of the Senate, I ask that the clerks to set the clocks accordingly. Senator Thorpe. Uh, Senator Thorpe, before you start, can I ask, please, senators who are not remaining for the debate, if you could uh, leave the chamber? Thank you. Thank you, Acting Deputy President. This country loves sport. Our athletes Senator, Senator, are our children's role. Sorry, could you move the motion before you speak to it? I move the motion. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. My apologies. Uh, this country loves sport. Our athletes are our children's role models. For First Nations communities, sport has played a role in our gatherings and celebrations since before colonisation, bringing people together and strengthening our culture. Recently, we have been seeing more and more athletes, fans and community leaders taking action for climate justice. This shows the next generation what good leadership looks like in caring for our country and our communities. Climate change is making our country sick, and fossil fuel companies are continuing to destroy our lands, our waters and our skies, fueling climate change and killing us. Fossil fuels are the new tobacco. When we realised that tobacco had serious consequences to our health, we decided that the companies responsible for these harms had no place in sponsoring the sports teams and athletes we love. Now, as this country suffers devastating floods and fires, our athletes and everyday people are taking a stand to say that these dirty polluters have lost their social licence and have no place in sponsoring our beloved sports teams and players. In, a, in an attempt to regain this social licence, these dirty companies are pumping millions of dollars into sponsoring some of our biggest sports teams and events, giving an estimated $14 million a year to national sporting teams, not to mention the millions in donations they give to both the Labor Party and the Liberal Party every year to keep this destructive industry alive. Recent polling shows that a majority of Australians believe that fossil fuel sponsorship is the new cigarette sponsorship and that fossil fuel companies should be banned from sponsoring national sports teams. This research shows that fossil fuel companies have lost their social licence to sports wash our national teams and major events, given that gas, coal and oil companies are accelerating the harmful impacts of climate change and extreme weather events. It's unsurprising that Australians and our athletes want these companies out of sport. As the only party, the only party in this place that does not accept donations from the polluting companies that are destroying our country and the globe, the Greens welcome and support the leadership shown by our deadly Noongar sister netballer Danelle Wallum, Noongar ex-AFL player Dale Kickett and Australian Test captain Pat Cummings in taking a stand against racist mining companies and fighting for climate justice. In voicing their objections to fossil fuel companies sponsoring their teams, these athletes are using their influence for positive change and that should be commended. The Greens want fossil fuels companies to be banned 
from all forms of advertising and sponsorships, including sponsoring any sporting team, organisation or event. If the government chooses to ignore the leadership of these athletes whilst they get selfies with them and stand on podiums, uh, which is quite hypocritical, they will be showing their, where their allegiances really lie. Not with our athletes and not with our communities, but with their mates in the fossil fuel industry who no longer have permission to continue destroying our country and polluting the planet. Senator Macdonald, you have the call. Very much, Acting Deputy President. Well, opponents of conventional energy companies and their involvement in sports sponsorship are determined to cut Australia's zinc-covered nose off to spite its face. Australia has always been a world leader in sport, but it now appears we want to lead the world in hypocrisy. Many professional sporting teams are coming under pressure to cut all ties with energy resources companies. But if they were really serious, that would mean no more flying to games and no more diesel fuelled team buses, no more night games unless the stadium lights run on completely renewable energy, which may prove difficult to date on a dark, windless night. Same with air conditioning in the rooms and coaches' boxes. Boots and sneakers are out. Mouth guards, plastic drink bottles, goals posts, playing apparel, clubs, bats, balls and supporters' gear too. And fans will have to stand because plastic grandstand seating is also out. Did anyone tell them these products are all made from minerals or petroleum resources? Professional sport would not exist without the byproducts of key mineral and energy commodities like coal, oil and gas. And I'm looking forward to seeing if this government is going to reject this radical position, whether it will say that somehow we're too good for the over $40 billion worth of royalties and company taxes paid for by resources companies and that we don't want to accept their money. Are we also too good for the hundreds of thousands of Australians who accept salaries and wages from resource companies? Are we too good for them as well? Recently, Hancock Prospecting, Woodside and Alinta Energy came under attack for the crime of daring to help our athletes play sport for a living, earn millions of dollars and bask in the adoration of fans. The truth is that much of professional and community sport is made possible because of Australian resources. For instance, Hancock Prospecting ploughs money into minor sports that don't get the big sponsors, such as Rowing Australia, Volleyball Australia and Synchronised Swimming Australia. And community sporting bodies represent mums and dads who take kids to sporting fields and ovals and stadiums right across the country every weekend and during the week. And so it's people like Mrs Reinhardt and our great resources companies who are putting their hands in their pockets and allowing these things to happen. Sadly, some sports stars, the Greens, most of the Labor Party, the Teals, Green Independents, don't seem to realise that traditional dispatchable energy from conventional sources are pivotal to our ability to live first-class lifestyles. They also ignore the fact that almost all the big energy companies have publicly and firmly committed to reducing their own emissions. They employ the most environmental scientists and do the most environmental studies outside of the public sector. They sponsor programs for underprivileged and Indigenous youth that don't garner the big headlines. And many of these programs are in regional areas where young people don't have access to the best coaching, the best facilities and the decent equipment available in the cities. And under these circumstances, it's hard enough for a country kid to crack the big time, but now we're being told that we have to put another obstacle in their way. Criticism of energy company sponsorship ignores the fact that regional sports clubs run on shoestring budgets, chook raffles and sponsorships from resource companies and the local businesses that supply these companies. What virtue signalling inner city professional athletes call sports washing is actually direct community benefit to struggling regional towns. Resources companies support regional communities with infrastructure such as pools, housing, libraries and sports facilities. The world is transitioning to renewable energy, but we can't just snap our fingers and end the use of coal, oil and gas. 
The demonisation of energy companies is truly astonishing because without them we wouldn't have lights, heating, computers, mobile phones and a myriad other first world conveniences. People can have views, but the views being expressed currently are extreme and ignore the fact of energy requirements in this country now and into the future. Thank you, Senator. Senator Payman. Thank you, Deputy Acting President. Sport has the ability to bring communities together, to share a common purpose and teach us all important life lessons. Our incredible Australian sporting heroes have a role to play in moving society forward. Players need to be heard on important matters and need to have avenues to voice their support or dissatisfaction for any issues they have in the workplace. We need to make sure players are being listened to regarding issues in their sport, including sponsorship. The emerging issue of players speaking on their sport's choice of sponsor reflects broader conversations that Australians are having around the country on social, environmental and cultural issues. Now, this is, however, a, fact, a matter for the individual sports and their governing bodies. Now, what's important is our supporting environments. Our sporting environments should have modern Australian workplaces where athletes are entitled to collective bargaining and the ability to fight for wages and conditions. The Albanese Labor government's investment in sport is about getting more Australians involved in sport, bringing communities together, boosting the economy and supporting our elite athletes to pursue success on the global stage. We recognise the importance of sport being safe, fair and inclusive for all. So, so that every Australian can feel the rush only sport can bring you. Now, last month I had the honour of meeting and participating in a panel discussion run by the Bashar Hooli Foundation Girls Leadership Program. We focused on the experience of Muslim women in leadership roles, the ups and downs they experienced and the importance of getting involved in community sport. The best part was hearing from young women from all different backgrounds and all ages about how much they love playing sports. It was remarkable and inspiring to see their resilience in the face of obstacles and their enthusiasm to be the change they wanted to see in the world. They recounted how participating in sports helped improve their physical and mental health, develop their self-confidence, establish their place in society and build leadership skills. I'm not much of an athlete myself, but I do know how important sport is to the communities we represent, how it brings people together, improves people's confidence and their engagement in the community. This is an important period for Australian sports. We bring together Australia's sports community and celebrate the upcoming green and gold runway of major sporting events in the lead up to the Brisbane 2032 Olympic and Paralympic Games. We have an incredible opportunity to unite, inspire and build Australia through sport. It will provide us with wonderful opportunities to boost and inspire more community participation right across the nation. Now regarding the motion moved by Senator McKim, these matters are for the sports clubs and their governing bodies. But I will stress again that it is important for us to remember that our sporting environments are still workplaces. Our incredible Australian athletes, like any other worker, should have a say in their workplace environment and conditions. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Senator David Pocock, you have the call. Thank you, Acting Deputy President. Uh, as has been pointed out, Australians love their sport. And uh, climate change is threatening our way of life here in Australia and is affecting sports. This is happening now. Sport is already feeling the effects of climate change. I think it's really important to remember that in the context of this debate. We're seeing sporting clubs not being able to ensure, ensure against uh, bushfire, against um, flood damage, 
and uh, pitches being too hard to be played on in, in, during droughts, this is having an effect already. We hear the arguments for fossil fuel sponsorship in sport. You do need sponsors in sport. That's, that's, that's clear in professional sport. Community sports often rely on it too. Uh, but fossil fuel companies represent only 3.5% of sport and business partnerships. So this is not an insurmountable challenge. And clearly a lot of sports are working on this. Uh, it's curious that many of these fossil fuel companies do not sell a product to consumers. So I think clearly this is about social license. And I think that's the concern of athletes who have been raising concerns about them being used to extend the social license of an industry which has many of those companies have no plans of, of winding down and transitioning. That's, that's the concern. We're not saying turn off the, the tap on fossil fuels today. We're saying we need to be part of a transition and many of these companies uh, who sponsor sport don't have a, a, um, a plan. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm out of time, but I do want to point out this is the first time the Greens have met, mentioned fossil fuels uh, sponsorship in sport, and this is not adequate time to debate something like this before putting it to a vote to the Senate. This warrants much more debate, and I am disappointed that we're going to hear a minute or two from senators Thank and then a vote very much, Senator on this. Uh, Cop, my your point. time has expired. Senator Canavan. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Deputy President. Willie, uh, the, the reserves of hypocrisy within the Australian Greens Party no no bounds. And uh, as I often comment, if only we could capture uh, their hypocrisy and, and convert it into electricity, it would be the ultimate source of renewable power. It is infinite in its supply. Because here we have a motion from the Greens saying they don't want they don't want any money from fossil fuels to fund uh, sports in this Australia in, in this country in Australia. Okay, okay. Every election that I've known in my time in this place, every election, the Greens policy platform, which can't even be calculated on modern computers according to the former Treasury Secretary Ken Henry, the Greens policy platform uh, is funded by extra taxes on fossil fuels. <laughs> the only way they get to pay uh, for their political promises is from the funds of the coal and gas industries. If there weren't coal mines and gas fields in this Australia, the, the Greens would have massive, massive black holes for their, for their crazy plans for high-speed rail across all around the country, uh, uh, for, uh, for their, their plans to give health care to everybody, no matter what the cost that we can't afford. All of those plans that the Greens want to do, they, some of them are good things. I'd love to give health care to everybody. But all of them in the Greens policy platforms are funded by fossil fuels. So here we have a motion here today where the Greens are trying to deny to other people, to Australian sports, who struggle, a lot of sporting codes in Australia struggle, to make ends meet. You know, the high-profile ones do all right, but netball is, has been struggling. They're trying to deny them access to the funds of fossil fuels, but not to themselves. I mean, if it weren't for fossil fuels, if we were serious about this motion, how would we fund our hospitals? Because most of that is coming from our coal and gas industries. We just had a budget that was handed down where a $50 billion increase, not, not the total amount, but a $50 billion increase came from higher coal and gas prices. We fund our public services in this country thanks to these large export industries. Coal is our biggest export. Gas is our third biggest export. Two together are 40 per cent of our nation's commodity exports. If we didn't have them, we wouldn't be able to fund ourselves, and certainly the Greens wouldn't be able to fund themselves without fossil fuels. Thank you, Senator. Senator Faruqi, you have the call. Thank you, Acting Deputy President. Digging up and burning fossil fuels is destroying our climate and our environment. A recent report from Swinburne Uni is the first to quantify the number and value of coal, gas and oil sponsorships in Australian sport. And it's not a small number. They spend 14 to 18 million dollars each year sponsoring 24 high-profile leagues and sports in Australia. Santos, Alinta, BHP and Woodside are all major sponsors. So why do they do it? Because as the climate crisis intensifies, more and more people are aware that it is greedy, morally bankrupt fossil fuel companies that are fueling this crisis. More people than ever can see the connection between the greed of fossil fuel corporations and the disastrous climate emergencies we see here and around the world. These fossil fuel corporations know that their social license is fast evaporating and so they are scrambling to greenwash their environmental reputations by throwing money at high-profile, much-loved sporting leagues and teams. I came here from Pakistan passionate about netball and cricket and soccer, and that passion has only grown while I've been here. Fossil fuel companies know that people here 
love sport. They know that when sports embrace their sponsorship and when athletes wear their names and their logos, that helps to normalize their existence and sanitize their reputation because of the community's love for sport. It is a tactic that's straight out of the playbook of other big cashed up unscrupulous industries such as the tobacco and gambling industries. Years of sponsorship of sporting teams, arts festivals and other community events positions companies as good corporate citizens and locks in dependence on corporate goodwill. But we must not accept that. We must not allow dirty, polluting fossil fuel companies to use sport to try and prolong their sorry existence while killing the planet. And just as we know fossil fuel sponsorships of sport needs to be banned, fossil fuel sponsorship of politicians needs to be banned. Both labor and coalition are on a unity ticket when it comes to accepting dirty donations from fossil fuel companies. This place is crawling with fossil fuel lobbies as a result. And sadly, big events in this place, like the Midwinter Ball, are sponsored by fossil fuel companies. It's no wonder that neither major party will call for an end to coal and gas, despite the overwhelming evidence that this is what we must do as a matter of climate science and as a matter of global justice. It takes courage to take a stand against powerful fossil fuel corporations. The majors, major parties don't have that courage, but athletes, activists, and sovereign owners do. And I want to pay tribute to the brave athletes, especially in netball, cricket, and AFL, who are speaking up and refusing fossil fuel sponsorships. Solidarity, in particular, with Diamonds player and Noongar woman, Donnell Wallum, for her immense courage, and kudos to her team for backing her. They are speaking out about their values. They are reflecting the values of their communities and their fans. This is the type of courage that gives me hope for the future. Thank you, Senator. Senator Roberts. Thank you, Madam Acting Deputy President. The Australian netball team rejected an offer of sponsorship from Gina Reinhart's Hancock Prospecting because they refused to wear the Hancock Prospecting logo. So who is the company our netball has rejected? Hancock Prospecting grew into one of Australia's largest companies on the strength of their Roy Hill iron ore mine. Iron ore is still their largest product. Hancock, Hancock mines coal as well. Since the Greens seem to be ignorant of metallurgy, let me educate you lot. The only way to make steel is using coal to heat iron ore. The Greens do talk about green steel as an alternative. It's not. Green steel is so brittle, it's unusable. There's no realistic chance of green steel ever being used to replace coal-fired steel. Green steel does have a role as a photo opportunity to, uh, to sustain the green steel lie designed to destroy the coal and steel industries for whatever fanciful reason the Greens advocate. Australian netballers rejected steel. Senator McKim's motion is rejecting steel. I hope all those who feel as Senator McKim does go home tonight and rip out their steel stoves, turn off their, their steel fridges, throw away their steel microwaves, their cutlery, their knives, their saucepans and well, you get the idea. How will Senator McKim and his steel haters get home? Not in a car or even an electric vehicle. Those are made from steel and other products made with coal and hydrocarbon fuels. These other products include aluminium, glass, fiberglass and plastics. Not in a train or bus or cycle or scooter. More steel, more oil. Walking home is of course an option. Just avoid steel, tap, steel cap work boots or any boots made with steel tools. The hypocrisy in this motion is breathtaking. Hancock Prospecting enjoys strong relations with the local Aboriginal communities who benefited over the last seven years from Thank mining royalties senators. totaling $300 million. Order. We have one flag, we are one community, Order. we are one nation, coal-powered coal and steel-built thanks to miners. When the chamber shows some respect, I'll call the next senator. Up until the last speaker, there was respect shown to other speakers, and I ask and remind senators to uh, listen in silence. Senator Cox, you have the call. Thank you, Acting uh, uh, Madam Deputy President. Uh, advertisements intend to build positive attitudes, emotion and connection with products and with companies. Corporations seek out sponsorship opportunities as forms of their marketing campaigns, and 
Unfortunately, fossil fuel companies are no different. And as the Australian Green spokesperson on resources, a proud West Australian and a long-suffering Fremantle Dockers fan, it pains me about how these worlds actually collide. Woodside Energy's merger with BHP's oil and gas assets makes it one of the ten biggest independent energy production companies in the world. Its 9.1 million tonnes of greenhouse gas emissions makes it the ninth highest emitter in Australia in the year 2021. The Fremantle Dockers have had a very long relationship with Woodside Energy, and in fact, Woodside Energy has been the major sponsor of the Dockers since 2010. And they signed on to support the Dockers AFLW team in 2017. This sponsorship deal was renewed last year in October and is worth approximately $2 million. I'm not the only purple scarf wearer who doesn't want Woodside's climate wrecking hands all over my footy team. The former Dockers player, my brother Dale Kickett, and former manager Jared McNeil stood alongside former Premier Carmen Lawrence, award-winning author Tim Winton, Nobel Prize winner uh, climate scientist Bill Hare, and former climate change adviser to Woodside, in fact, um, Alex Hillman, at a press conference last month to call for an end to Woodside sponsorship for our beloved club. Because fossil fuels have absolutely no place in sport while this climate is in crisis. And I echo the high profile Australians who do not want the Dockers' good name to be used by a corporation to enhance their reputation when its massive profit making activities are in fact threatening our environment and our health and our cultural heritage. Players, members, and supporters are speaking out because that's what they actually care about. They care about the planet. They don't want athletes branded with fossil fuel logos, again, granting social licence to operate in our communities. State capture is in fact real, and both of my colleagues, Senator Thorpe and Senator Furuki, have outlined this. And when Rio Tinto actually blew up the Jukun case, they actually lost their sponsorship deal with the AFL, and this actually shows that it's not about commercial risk and it's not about the money. There are other notable athletes that have in fact spoken out about the injustices about sports sponsorship, and they have also been named by my colleagues. The Australian Test and one-day international captain Pat Cummings recently urged Cricket Australia to look after or look for other ethical sponsors. Proud Noongar woman's sister, uh, Danelle Wallum, challenged Netball Australia about their multi-million dollar contract with Hand Hancock Prospecting because of racism, not because of the history of the company and what they think they've done for black people in this country because of the racism that exists, and that is history. She won and she made a spectacular debut days later, and I thank them for their leadership. And I ask those in this place to follow their lead. We can't continue to tackle the climate crisis if we are opening up new coal and gas projects, and there are currently 114 of those new coal and gas projects in the investment pipeline. If fossil fuel companies won't back off and put our health, the health of our children and the health of our environment before their profits, their power and their influence, as we, then as we and the parliament need to intervene the same way we did with big tobacco, stopping them from plastering their toxic brands everywhere they please. We are out of time, and the CSIRO State of Climate report released today tells us that Australia's climate has warmed by an average of 1.47 degrees since the national records began. The Paris Agreement requires us to keep that temperature below 1.5 degrees, and we are already heading to the point of no return. If you don't believe in doing everything that it takes to secure a future for our children on this planet, then you, in fact, don't deserve a, a seat in this place. Opening up new coal and gas projects will blow Labor's already uh, emissions reduction target that they've agreed to legislate in this place, and opening up Woodside's Scarborough project in particular alone will blow these targets. We need a moratorium on new coal and gas, and we need to ban fossil fuel sponsorships for sporting teams, organisations and events. It's time to stop the greenwashing of fossil fuel companies who are misleading the Australian public about their climate credentials. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. The question is that the motion moved by Senator Thorpe on behalf of Senator McKim be agreed to. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Those are against say no. no. I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it.
calling for a division? I only heard one voice. I'll put the I'll put the motion again. Those of that opinion uh, say aye. aye. Those who are opposed say no. No. The ayes have it. No. Uh, calling for a division. Yep. Uh, division is required. Ring the bells for four minutes, please. Lock the doors. The question is that the motion moved by Senator Thorpe on behalf of Senator McKim be agreed to. Those who uh, say aye, will you please move to the right? And those who are against nays, move to the left of the chairs. And I support uh, Senator Scar and Senator McKim.
there been 12 eyes and 28 noes, the it has been resolved in the negative. Thank you. Senators who are leaving the chamber, do so quietly, please.